Hey everybody. So I'm going to start right on time so that we have as much time for questions as possible at the end. Uh, so thanks for coming to our presentation on uh, Drupal Media Image Captions using AI. Uh, to start off, uh, we'll do brief introductions. I'm Laura, and this is Bobin. Uh, we are both senior uh, software developers at MyPlanet. Uh, which is a digital studio that specializes in smarter interfaces. Uh, we have a wide uh, variety of clients and a lot of different technologies um, we use, including uh, Drupal, AI implementations, uh, custom JavaScript applications, just to name a few. Uh, My Planet is located in Toronto, Canada, which is where I'm from, uh, and Bobin lives in Serbia. So one cool, really cool thing about this talk is that this is the first time that Bobin and I have met in person after working together for almost two years. Uh, so that's one of the really cool things about DrupalCon is that it brings together developers from all over, uh, including the ones you work with. Okay, so on to the presentation. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the where, the what, and the why associated with this topic. And then Bobin is gonna give a live demo. Uh, so first, the burning question. When you think about um, Drupal Media image caption su suggestions using AI, one of the first questions you might ask is why? What is the use case for this? So, um, oops, wait a minute. Sorry. My uh, oh, technical mode function. Uh, it's not changing my my notes for the next slide. Um, all right, I'll just wing it. Uh, okay, so why use AI captions in a CMS? Um, so. A lot of the time, um, so basically, it saves a lot of time. Uh, I know that as a developer, when I am uh, developing an image uh, feature, for example, uh, you know, and I have to enter in like an image over and over again, I'm just going to enter test in the uh, in the um, alt field. Um, and I think that it's true that a lot of us. Um, take shortcuts, which is uh, why a lot of the time um, we end up with sort of bad alt captions or, uh, or no alternative text at all. Um, another use case is if you have uh, a large archive of images, uh, you know, I mean, if we think that it takes, you know, a lot of time to, to make one image caption, if you've got a large arch archive, that's going to take you like forever to add image captions. So, you know, having a tool that is gonna insert image captions that, you know, you can go and review later on is great. And, um, you know, we would strongly uh, recommend that in both cases, you know, like whether you're using it at the, you know, entering for entering one image or for a giant archive, that you go back and review the image captions. Uh, because a lot of the time, well, sometimes, a percentage of the time, you get unexpected results. So you want to you want to go ahead and review them uh, if possible. Um, so another another reason to use it is um, that it is a, a prompt for content authors to enter uh, a proper caption. So in the same way that um, you know Drupal has the alt field um, is required by default. Um, but so, and that in itself is a prompt to enter something. But if you have a button that says, you know, um, generate uh, image caption, that's a prompt to enter a full sentence or, you know, a good caption rather than just, you know, a single word. Um, and uh, another possibility is as an educational tool that describes what types of captions are best for screen reader users. And uh, I'll talk about that uh, a little bit more later when I talk about the Microsoft Ability Initiative. But uh, so just keep it in mind for now as a possible use case. 
So a bit of background about the model. Um, we decided that we wanted to focus in this demo on uh, the integration of the model with Drupal. Uh, so uh, while Bobin is going to talk a little bit later about how um, you know, creating a model like this is within reach of any of us, um, you know, using TensorFlow. Uh, the model that we're using uh, is implemented with TensorFlow. Um, <clears throat> uh, we're using an API that is provided by IBM. So uh, the model was already created and, um, and it was pre-trained using uh, a data set. <laughs> Um, it is based on a model called the show and tell model that was developed by uh, Google scientists, uh, research scientists. Um, and um, yeah, and they developed it uh, at the, in the beginning, uh, they had another model that they were using to translate from one language to another uh, using an encoder decoder type model. Uh, so they decided that they were going to try to take that model uh, and use it for translation of images into sentences. And so they replaced the encoder part, which encoded sentences, with a CNN that encodes images. So the encoder now encodes images, and the decoder decodes them into producing, producing sentences. So this is a little bit more information about the uh, encoder uh, decoder mod uh, model. Um, so the uh, the encoder is a deep convolutional neural network called Inception V3. Uh, it was developed by Google, um, and uh, and it's pre-trained using a very large data set. Uh, the model, these Inception V3 models are currently considered to be state of the art for encoding images. Um, the decoder is an RNN, which is also called a recurrent neural network, um, and uh, also called a long term, a long, <coughs> short term uh, memory network. Um, and they are good for, uh, for sequencing. Uh, and in this case, uh, the, the network uh, produces one word at a time. So the sequence is actually the sentence that it produces. Um, so what we're looking at here is uh, the deep, a deep convolutional neural network. Um, the, the role of the DCNN is to reduce images into a form which is easier to process and less expensive to process. Um, so what we see is, um, uh, this is a, a visualization of convolution. So in convolution of an image, uh, there is a filter, which is the, the smaller uh, object there, that's also called a kernel. And it scans over images um, and, and so it moves across and transverses them. and uh, and, and takes out a lot of the, uh, the dimensions, uh, making sure to save the, you know, the edges and the most important uh, aspects, uh, and then passes that along to the next layer. Um, and so a deep convolutional uh, network may have many layers, which is actually what the term deep refers to, is uh, you know, la layer upon layer, um, and each successive one sort of uh, extracting more data from the image and reducing it more. Um, so <clears throat> recurrent neural network. Now this image is actually a representation uh, provided in the, the uh, Google, then in the show and tell uh, documentation. So what we see on the left here is uh, the deep CNN. And that image, even though you can't see it right, right now, is um, a representation of the con convolutions. So like all of those, the little chunks sort of represent <laughs> the different convolutional layers. Uh, it outputs an image vector and then uh, that 
gets uh, handed over to the, uh, the decoder, uh, which is the RNN. Um, and uh, at each, so basically at, at each stage in, uh, in the RNN, it's generating one word of the sentence. Um, then they use a tool called beam search that at each stage um, grabs the, the top three sentences that are produced. Uh, they did a little bit of uh, experimentation um, and figured out that the correct beam size, so uh, beam size meaning the number of sentences that it keeps at each uh, iteration, um, is three. So, um, and you'll see uh, during the demo that what uh, the model gives back to us at the end is, uh, is in fact three sentences. Uh, the data set, um, the data set is really important. So different data sets will give you drastically different results. Uh, the data set that we're using is uh, sort of a generic one. It's very large. It's meant to uh, cover most use cases. Um, you can also, like if you had a use case that was very specific, for example, if you had, if you wanted a model that was able to identify specific types of clothing, you would use a data set that was specifically designed for that. You know, that could look at an image of a person and say, they're wearing you know, a double-breasted suit and a Windsor tie or whatever. Um, Microsoft uh, Ability Initiative, it says accessibility because I always get that wrong, but it's the Abil Ability Initiative. Uh, and we've got links to all of these things um, in this slideshow, which we're gonna pub publish uh, if you're interested. Um, the Microsoft Ability Initiative is, uh, they are working uh, to produce a data set that is designed specifically to give, uh, you know, good captions for screen reader users. So, um, uh, you know, um, sort of looking at what types of information tends to be missing from AI, AI generated captions. And also, um, they're looking into AI, you know, um, uh, an AI caption can be more than just text. It can be multidimensional. It could include multimedia. So there's a lot of different things that AI could potentially offer for uh, visually impaired users, which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Um, and I think it's going to provide uh, great information for anyone that wants to create their own data set on how to create captions that are, that are good for screen reader users. Why not use AI captions? Um, so this is just um, a caveat saying, when you're using them, be careful, because sometimes you are going to see unexpected results. Um, Microsoft published a tool called CaptionBot. I don't know if anyone remembers CaptionBot, but they put up this AI captioning tool, and they said, you know, internet, come try out our AI captioning tool. And you know, internet responded with by uploading you know all kinds of like political images and stuff, you know that AI probably wouldn't have any idea about, and got very funny results back. You know, for example, this one is like a picture of the uh, the lunar, the first lunar landing, and the caption says, "I'm not really confident, but I think it's a man standing on top of a dirt field," which is kind of funny. Um, it also illustrates. Uh, one of the challenges with AI captioning, which is that a caption ideally should communicate the intent of the author. And AI captions, you know, that is something that, you know, while they are improving, they're not quite there yet. Um, you know, one of the uh, improvements that uh, is being looked at for AI captioning is that, you know, in addition to the actual image, uh, the AI will be able to potentially look at the surrounding text in an article to try and get a better idea of the context. Um, but that's not quite there yet. Um, so, yeah. So, um, in conclusion, use it responsibly. Uh, implement it as an assistive tool rather than as the default. So, you know, review the captions. Make sure they're good. Um, if you are using captions that potentially are not reviewed, 
make that known to visually impaired users uh, that there is a percentage of error. Um, studies have tr shown that visually impaired users tend to trust the captions, but that if you, you know, add uh, information saying that, you know, there's a 20% chance that this caption is incorrect, then, uh, you know, they are more likely to be skeptical um, of, of the caption, which, you know, is, uh, is a good thing. Um, and uh, so prompts content author authors to review the questions also. Um, if you would like to, so I'm, I'm about to hand it over to Bobin. I see there is one question. Should we answer that now or? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if you have any. Can you step up to that? Sorry. I was wondering if you have any tips on how to communicate that to the visually impaired user. Like would you include it in the LTAC or do you have a general message on top of the page? Um, I, you know, I think that it could be communicated in different ways. Um, I, you know, one proposal I had that is that, you know, you could always include that information in the alt tag and then if they are being reviewed, you could just remove that information from the alt tag, uh, which would be a, a good way to do it. Um, on the other hand, if they're about to look at a, a, an archive of images that are not reviewed, you could put that information at the, at the start. Um, so, yeah. All right, over to Bobin, live demo time. Thank you, Laura. Hi, everyone. I'm, my name is Bobin. Uh, you'll have to, first of all, forgive me. This is my first time uh, doing any presentations at DrupalCon. So I have to uh, set a timer so that I can constrict myself uh, not talk too much about such a complex uh, theme, such as uh, using AI, especially in Drupal projects. So Laura gave a very good uh, intro in uh, how and why we might have a purpose in using AI models in detecting captions from a whole range of different images um, in our websites. And um, it might plan it. Uh, a lot of the sites that we had worked on uh, in the past had such a need. Um, so instead of um, bugging uh, content uh, moderators, uh, entering different alt tags for different images, we had uh, uh, sites with um, a fairly large amount of images, and it was important that each of them uh, had an alt tag for visually impaired users. So, uh, as the AI technology progressed, uh, the uh, we export various different uh, technology that, that are offered. Uh, as, as Laura already mentioned, IBM technology is just one out of many technologies that we can use to uh, train. Uh, machine to detect something from the uh, image. And for the purpose of, of this demo, we used IBM because it was, uh, uh, I wouldn't say the simplest one, but it uh, tends to uh, serve as a proof of concept uh, into how you can go ahead and train your own models to detect various different images. Uh, I'll go back to this point a little bit at the end once we show the live demo and go through um, a bit more into how we implemented this. Before we dive really into the code, uh, just want to say a little bit of uh, history on, on the demo. So we, uh, before we started implementing this solution, we needed to ask ourselves two questions. So the first one would be how to do this in Drupal. The other one would be what to use uh, you know, as a server that would give us information on what uh, is showing on the image. So on the Drupal uh, end, we decided that we just simply use the regular mo uh, module and library approach. The library will be used to uh, initiate API calls towards the uh, whatever endpoint it will give us the results. Uh, the module will be there to give you administration over the API usage. Um, one of the, those usage in this case is definition of the uh, base URL that you can use to ping the model to give you the results. Again, this is an important point that I will stress out at the end, uh, and you'll see why it's uh, needed. So we had the model library model uh, implemented on Drupal end, and we decided to go with the IBM one uh, to get results on image captions. Um, let me show you. We can simply. What we did is um, 
this is of course Drupal 8 site. And uh, since the field API has been uh, largely upgraded in Drupal 8, uh, for us it was extremely easy to implement enhancements over the existing fields that exist. In our case, we used uh, the image field, which is uh, part of the core, and we enhance it uh, so that we can add additional configurations op configuration options when you're uh, extending the field in any of your content types. Uh, and also, we are extending the uh, the widget field widget functionality uh, that uh, determines how the field is represented on the uh, I would call this not creation uh, section. So we extended only two base classes: the field type uh, for configuration options, field widget for display. Uh, of course, you can extend the module itself to include the uh, field formatter options. Uh, so you know, to show the, the representation of the image in the way you want, but since the alt tag is uh, part of the natural render of the image field, there's, there was really no other need for us to do anything uh, additionally. Um, how does it work? I know you're all excited to see this, so, uh, oops. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, at least it's not a wide screen of death. But here we are. I'll try not to touch anything else. So we have the image field. You can select any image, long. I've numbered them. So let's select the image, it gets uh, uploaded. What you get is additional options uh, besides the alt text, which is by default available. So we added this field set here with the single button. So if we hit this, uh, it contacts, it does all the stuff in the background that we'll uh, pretty much discuss about soon enough. And as a result, it gives you this additional select field. Now, um, every model, uh, it does, it, of course, it doesn't work 100% cases. So even in those cases, if it gives you a good uh, caption, it still uh, doesn't give you one uh, result. It gives you at least a couple. Um, it all depends on the model. Uh, in this case, we're using the select option because we have a number of different uh, options. So as you can see, uh, I'm hoping everyone can see that uh, I have an image of a mountain and a cloud. So all three results here that are showing uh, relate, well, pretty much describe what, what we are trying to uh, set in the alt text. It's not very uh, literal, it's not um, you know, something that a poet might write, uh, but it's still a, a very good representation of what the image is all about. Now, you'll also notice, um, of course, the, the sentence itself uh, does not have the first letter capital. I mean, it's something that you guys as a Drupal developers can uh, do additional formatting in order to show, but the important stuff is uh, at the end. So you see a, a, a very large floating point number at the end, which represents by uh, model opinion, the probability that whatever it is offering to you uh, is the correct definition of the image. Um, so it's a very small floating point number because like I said, it's not uh, an exact uh, representation of the image, but it's something that uh, it sees from its own extremely large database of uh, images. Um, so this option, um, the, the probability, what the IBM Max Image Generator calls, uh, can be, you know, when you add it, it automatically populates the uh, alt tag field. Uh, this is an optional value. So there's, um, when you're setting the field configuration, you can just simply we added this configuration option to either use it or not. If you disable it, then let's see. And let's add additional image. Again, let's generate the alt tag. And again, um, let me see if I can just quickly so it's a train near uh, on, a, on a seaside, which I hope you already saw. So, uh, and the definition that we get from uh, the IBM model is pretty good. 
it's pretty accurate. And again, we get the probability uh, uh, showing. If we want, we can just re uh, delete it. The good thing is that the alt field itself, whatever you select here, it's still uh, editable. So, sorry. So I can just simply delete and add any whatever text I want to change it into. So that's uh, one additional step that it's optional for uh, content admins to do in case they want to uh, additionally format or change whatever the, the suggestion was from IBM. This is pretty much it. Uh, it's a, a small demo, but a lot of things happen uh, in the back end. So let me just quickly check my time. I still have it. Uh, good. So I'll quickly switch to uh, the code itself. So how, how does this work? There are numerous steps. Uh, uh, once we load the page, it happens when we load the page and uh, to the point when we uh, get the select box with the uh, 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 available options. So start, starting with this, what we have is, uh, like we mentioned, uh, so we extended the uh, uh, field type class. We added uh, the regular, we used the regular form API in Drupal 8 to add additional field uh, that um, uh, is, you know, uh, gonna show the uh, select box, the, uh, the button that triggers everything else. And then we also have the field, uh, sorry, this is the field widget, the, the field type simply adds this checkbox on the field configuration page. The uh, field widget. Sorry. Zoom in. Oh, sorry. Bear with me. Hope it's better now. Thank you. Um, so yeah, um, this is the um, the checkbox. Oh no, uh, this is the field widget. So uh, it shows the button. Uh, it, it's not a complete solution because the, the field widget class also depends on uh, some JavaScript work that we had because everything that uh, includes executing the uh, API call itself is done through uh, Ajax. So, uh, Um, in the end, I think the last slide contains all of the links, including uh, the, the uh, link to the repository where the custom module, the library that we did, is available. And we, we of course, encourage you to all uh, clone it, expand it, uh, and enhance it in any way you want. Okay, so what's else? Um, so you get the field widget displaying the button. You upload the image, the button dis uh, displays, you click on generate uh, the, uh, the tag. What happens next? There's a small JavaScript code that we added, uh, which is again, part of the, um, the, the, the custom module itself. Uh, I don't want to uh, zoom in right now because uh, it's not a difficult code. It's a regular jQuery with a little bit of JavaScript, which is taking whatever the uh, image uh, ID is and uh, executes an AJAX call. It's relatively straightforward. The point in all this is that uh, it's uh, pinging a, a Drupal control that we uh, created. So uh, you can have two things here. You can either directly ping the IBM model or you can just simply have something uh, uh, called you know, Drupal backend that will you know, act, uh, then call IBM uh, system, get the data, parse it any way you want. We chose the latter method because it gives us greater control. So Drupal backend uh, pings the IBM model, gets the reported <laughs> data, and then we can parse it, uh, capitalize the first letter, um, remove the probability or add it, instead of uh, putting everything uh, on, on the client inside. Whatever method you choose is uh, 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 up to you, but this is what we uh, currently did. So now we are uh, pinging, in our case, the Drupal backend. There's a control that we created, uh, which takes the image ID and then collects all the necessary data and pings the uh, IBM Max Image Caption Generator. It's a very long title for it. Um, so I'll use IBM for short for now on. What happens there? That's the uh, most interesting part, and this is the part that uh, Laura was uh, talking about. So the image is processed. 
it goes through the encoder, the uh, convolutional neural network, first of all. Uh, it's split into many different details. So um, in general terms, the image is split into whatever the system can uh, process individually. So uh, we had a mountain with a sky above it, maybe a little li river on it. The, the convolutional neural network tries to uh, split all of those terms in the penalty. So it splits the image into smaller pieces and runs through its extremely large database. I think uh, the IBM uh, model has around 500,000 images. Uh, they're not very diverse, but they are mostly related to, uh, I would say, uh, nature images. So that's why, uh, in our case, we got pretty good results uh, and descriptions of the uh, images. So once it goes through the encoder, the encoder tries to uh, put all those independent pieces together, uh, and as a result, you get a couple of different sentences. So since uh, the pairing of all those different layers that uh, we got from the encoder, gave a, uh, could give us uh, a lot of different uh, results. That's why you also get a, a couple of different options, all with a different probability. The larger probability, the better description of the image is. Of course, the most important thing in all of this is the database itself. Like I said, uh, IBM currently has 500. I think they're continuing work on this, but since this model is a proof of concept for them, they went, you know, they have a whole other slew of uh, other models that they are training for uh, different purposes. In any case, back to our uh, code, is the decoder finalizes everything, puts the different sentences, uh, and puts it into a, a JSON output that the Drupal control now receives. Drupal, uh, like I said previously, we parse it, we uh, do with it whatever we want, and output the JSON uh, again. Good thing is you can use the JSON API, the, the, the new module that will be uh, shipping soon, and I think it's already available, and you give it to the JavaScript. As a result, what you get is, um, sorry, switch. Where's the browser? Okay, uh, if you can uh, drag it while I'm speaking. So what we get as a result is a uh, select box with uh, options that you can use to, um, it's pretty sensitive, um, with a, a, a lot of different options. There's one more um, demo that I'd like to show you, and it's based on what I've said uh, earlier that why uh, the models are uh, important to be um, trained well enough. The IBM model uh, is mostly about nature, so it's not really good at uh, recognizing something else. It's, machines won't be, uh, don't believe me, uh, my word, but machines won't be uh, still ready for at least another 10 years to detect everything that you put at it. Uh, it still needs a, 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 a lot of uh, storage and a lot of data in order to understand everything. So uh, I found an image that, um, it's going to be interesting for the IBM system to uh, to uh, try and describe. So here we have a close-up uh, of a monkey's face. So let's do a let's get available objects. So I don't know if we can see it. What the model sees is a large elephant with trees in the background. Uh, if the first row, if you can see, the third uh, option is my favorite. So it's completely off point. Um, it doesn't mean that the system doesn't work. It's simply a matter of uh, how well you train it. So initially when we started this proof of concept project is that we asked ourselves, do we really need to create our own model uh, and train it for our special purposes or can we just use IBM and hope an image that you throw at it will, will work fine? Well, for proof of concept at least, the answer was pretty simple. It's important for you because Drupal uh, is heading is and it already is heavily invested in media, so you you guys are doing uh, media sites with a lot of images, not only uh, um, images in articles, but you're also representing the uh, you know the hero banners, um, static images that don't represent perhaps um, valuable information, but they do for visually impaired, uh, maybe they even do represent information. So it's important 
that uh, you use as much information as you can, not only for the visual users that can see, but also visually impaired users. The important thing with this is you have a website that's doing, I don't know, something related to the recipes, uh, related to food. It would be much more preferable if you create your own model, train it with a whole slew of uh, images related to food and recipes so that uh, something like this works in your advantage. Uh, so you would create it once, constantly um, um, feed it with the new images and the model will work uh, for you. I mean, it's something that you can uh, see benefits in the long run, of course. So that's one of the, uh, the, the ways how the technology will also progress uh, because the model itself can then move on to its parent. Uh, and you know, the different uh, learning models can be joined together. And you know, so instead of just uh, seeing this as an elephant, the same model uh, can uh, you know, get the data from another model and then describe the image properly. It's up to you. I mean, uh, I expect the next 10 years will be uh, pretty interesting because the models will grow in size, uh, not only by Google, IBM, Microsoft, and Facebook, but you know the rest of the community, including Drupal. So that's about it. Thank you. <laughs> of course, we have time for questions. Yeah, no, we, uh, yeah, please uh, take the mic, uh, sorry. Um, you demonstrated um, this uh, image caption one by one. Is it also possible to uh, generate captions for a large archive of image fields in an existing website? Absolutely. Um, and this is my uh, this was my uh, first point uh, how we decided to implement the project so you have a library that's simply uh, there to initiate API calls the biggest problem is that e one API call per image can be made uh, to the IBM if you create your own model and you write the the, the backend so that it uh, you know, allows multiple images to be um, provided at the same time it's fine the IBM one uh, only allows one image per uh, per API call the way you implement, in, since we're talking about the image field uh, for this demo, uh, if it's a multiple fi uh, value field, you can, you know, you'll have one generate alt button per uploaded image. So, you know, click on it twice to get uh, alt text for two images. That's about it. Um, the, this is a proof of concept. Uh, everything that Drupal has, you can use, so you can extend it in any uh, way you want. But it is possible, absolutely. Okay, okay so a quick question. Um, IPTC data. So most of the large scale um, image uh, banks or, or, or agencies such as uh, Associated Press uh, convey information using IPTC data, which is kind of like it doesn't have any support for, for linguistics or anything. Have you tried using IPTC data for, for the machine learning uh, uh, conversion or, or anything? I guess Laura can do this because uh, she's more in the central since I'm uh, from Serbia. I, I do uh, the heavy lifting part, but I'm guessing no, right? Yeah, no, I, no we haven't uh, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, so again, this is a proof of concept and it's, it'll be interesting to offer this. You know, uh, here's an idea for you. Uh, if you have a company, if you work at a company, you can, you know, supply this to one of your uh, existing or future clients. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, what type of calls are um, connected with calling the IBM uh, service uh, to get the caption and what are the approximate costs for getting alternative um, image sets to train on? Like um, 500,000 images plus uh, a description isn't something we can we can really build up by ourselves. So we have to get it somewhere. Yeah, um, you want to take that? Um, yeah. So I know that some uh, data sets are publicly available. Uh, the one that was used to train this the show and tell mod, uh, model is, is publicly available, and I know that there are some large ones that are. Uh, I know that the uh, Ability Initiative is going to make theirs public, as far as I know. Um, 
So yeah, there are quite a few uh, that are. Uh, as far as you know, ones that are charging, I'm not sure what the cost is. Uh, but yeah, it would be interesting to see. That's probably going to be something that's monetized more and more. So it'll be interesting to see what it costs. Okay, and the IBM service is it currently free or? Uh, this this is particular free. one, yeah. Yeah. For, for um, evaluation purposes, probably. Yeah, I think that it may uh, only allow a certain number in a given amount of time. Uh, yeah. Um, so um, the way they offer it is, uh, of course, you want to use it for commercial purposes. It's never free. Uh, for um, you know, not making I think more than hundred API calls uh, at per day is again free. Um, but you know, with IBM, it's always contact us for more information. So based on your needs. You know, you should always contact them directly uh, and, and you know specify this. Um, the Amazon also. I think it's worth mentioning that uh, the Coursera has a, a free course on the Amazon AWS uh, model training. So AWS um, also, as you already know, uh, whatever whenever they are used, that's how they uh, they charge you. So sitting, if you have a website there, uh, it's not doing nothing. You don't, uh, you're not being charged with, with anything. But they have a extremely valuable course on machine learning, especially uh, in related to their services. And I think one of the information that you'll find there uh, might be how they value this. In any case, um, this is technology, emerging technology. So it's definitely not free, especially if you consider uh, half a million images, quality images, you know, uh, 2000 by 2000 resolution, uh, they take up a lot of space. And we're not talking about space only, we're talking about processing power uh, because it needs to, um, it's not going once to, uh, to uh, the same image. It's going a uh, few times because the convolutional uh, uh, neural network and the RNN and CNN, the way they work, they, they need to have multiple layers. So the image is not spliced once, but it's recombined and spliced in another way. It's uh, extremely time-consuming process, so we still don't have that heavy processing power. Yeah, I think uh, to train a model with, you know, many, many images and captions can take, you know, a couple of weeks. So, Are the captions always uh, delivered in English? Um, any ideas for translations for huh. liquid sites? Yeah. Um, so, with everything, even the you know, uh, the PHP, the Python, everything else is in English. So everything they do, do they do in English first of all. But um, yeah, um, since this is proof of concept, it's only available for English, the IBM one. But you do have um, uh, other languages that are supported, and I'm guessing they are not free at all. Um, don't accept anyone, but uh, any uh, language of it, you know, language that can you you can think of, but. Dutch certainly might be available, for example. Yeah. It's charged. So. Okay. Almost a question or remark. I think it might be good if you might. Uh, I'm not sure if it's, uh, if it's possible, but it's the alt text. So say we use this system, and uh, I correct the alt text because well, there's a gorilla and not a, an elephant. Is that information being sent back to IBM to train the system, or are there other providers who do that? Um, so you remember the whole thing with the Amazon Alexa uh, that it's yes. listening to you, even though you haven't said anything to them. Uh, it's the same thing here. Uh, and again, uh, I'm guessing we're living in the age of information, so anything that you can uh, supply it with, it'll use to train. So it's not doing anything bad with it. Uh, it's using it to train your data. Again, um, it's never written anything, so it, it can be completely written. And I think that you know, if you trained your own model, you could definitely set set up. You know, if you were using a system like this with a CMS, you could set it up so that it did send the the result back, so that you know it was taking whatever the users are entering and and um, you know adding it as additional information for that image. All right, well, thank you everyone uh, for coming out. Thank you.